All right, so now that we have a cube that's gonna chase us around on the map, let's go ahead and take a look at spawn points and how we can create them so that it spits a cube out, let's say every X seconds. So to start off with this, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure nothing is selected in the hierarchy here. I'm gonna right click. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and create an empty here. This is all we need for a spawn point. All we need is the vector three for the position. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it over here just a little bit. Hit F to zoom in. And when we click off of it, actually let's name it first before we click off. So I'm just gonna call mine spawn point. And when I click off of it, I can't see it anymore. I have absolutely no way to tell where it is except for clicking on it in the hierarchy. Now Unity has little gizmos built in where we can go ahead and click this little rainbow box up here and go ahead and select one of these options. I'm just gonna pick the orange. And now when we select off of our spawn point, it still shows up. When we move around the scene, we can still see it. And if we select it in the scene, it'll actually highlight over here as well. So let's go ahead and create a script for this. So I'm gonna go ahead, create C-sharp script. I'm gonna call it spawner. Actually, let's keep it the same name as we have for our game object, which is spawn point. And let's, let's make sure we spell it right. <laughs> I'll go ahead and double click that to open it up in Mono Develop. And like always, the first thing I like to do is go ahead and delete this. And let's go ahead. And the way I want this to work is I want this spawn point to go ahead and just spit out a cube every X seconds. And let's start it off by, I don't know, every three seconds. It's gonna spit another one out. So to do that, we have to be able to spawn something, which is a, a prefab in Unity. And we'll get to how to make a prefab. Actually, no, let's just go ahead and take a look at it now. So the first thing I wanna do is come down, create a folder called prefabs. Remember, organization matters. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into that folder. And if we go ahead and select our evil QB, take note, it's written in gray, kind of white, depending on your setup, I guess. If you have the light skin enabled, then I guess it's gonna be black. But when you go ahead and drag it down here, uh, we get this little evil cubie. All the components are attached to it. It's got that little blue square beside it, meaning prefab. And if we look up here, now it's turned to blue. Now prefab is just a prefabricated game object. So it's something that we've made. And now because it's a prefab, we can re start reusing it over and over and over again. But the really cool thing about prefabs is if I go ahead and make changes to this one, Let's say I went ahead and I wanted to change the scale. I'm just gonna make it two by two by two. I could go ahead and if we look at the prefab down here, it's still one by one by one. We'll select the one that we've made the changes to, hit apply. And now when we click on the prefab, they're all two by two by two. And if I drag more into the scene, they're all gonna be two by two by two. Kind of cool. Now, if we go ahead and change it back, let's say one by one by one, we hit apply again, all of them are changed. So even if we had like a thousand of these things everywhere and we wanted to go ahead and let's just say change the color of an evil cubie, all of them change for us. And that's just one of the power of prefabs. Now let's say we've got you know, like a million different assets down here and we wanna know where this prefab is located. We can go ahead and hit select and it'll dig through and show you exactly where it's located. And another thing we could do is, well, let's say we come in and we had that two by two by two. And I don't know, let's also give it a bit of rotation on Y. And then we decide, oh, I don't like this. It really isn't what I wanted. I can go ahead and hit revert and it will revert all of its values to whatever my prefab is set to. And to be honest, I like to have all my prefabs set to zero, zero, zero for the position and then just actually have the position set in the world when I set it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that duplicate we made. And if you have any other questions about prefabs, let me, go, let me know down below. But now that we have it created, we're gonna go ahead and jump back into our script. And now we can say public. Remember what public does? That's right, it makes it show up in the inspector. Scripting wise, it actually does something as well, but we're not gonna to dig too deep into that right now. We're gonna make a game object and I'm just gonna call it prefab. 
All right. Now I'm going to make a method that actually spawns this cube for me. So I'm going to go ahead and say void spawn. And the way Unity works with uh, spawning objects is that it uses this instantiate command. And we see that there's six different versions of it right here. The version I'm going to look at today is the one that takes three parameters. And that first parameter that we're going to want, if we go ahead and scroll down, uh, this one here. Oh, so that's the one that takes two. I like taking the one that has all three in it. So I have control over what it spawns, the object, where it spawns it, the position, and the position it's going to be facing again, which to be honest, most times it's just, I use quaternion identity, but let's go ahead and fill these out. So I'm going to go ahead and spawn my prefab. I want to spawn it at my current position. Now to get the current position of the game object that this component is going to be attached to, we can say transform dot position. And for the rotation, I am just going to use quaternion dot identity point forward and save that off. Now I actually need a way to call this. Remember I said I wanted to spawn one every five seconds. Well, Unity has this one method that we can use, which is called start. And this is fired off when the game actually starts. And we actually have a command that we can use called invoke, repeating. And if we take a look here at its signature, it takes a method name. Uh, this float time is how long after the game starts do I call this method? And then we also have float repeat rate. So how often after I've spawned the first one do you want me to spawn the second one? So I'm going to go ahead and say the method we want to call is spawn. I want it to start, let's say, two seconds after. Now this is a float value. And when you're dealing with float values in C Sharp, just remember to always put that little left behind. Now we need the repeat time. Now I want to be able to change this repeat time in the editor. So I'm going to come up, say public float repeat time. And by default, I'm going to set it to three seconds. And we'll fix the typos. And let's go over this for a second. So we know what public does. It goes ahead and allows us to access it inside the inspector. Uh, the green part here, we know that's the name we're giving to this float and we're assigning it a value of three. But what exactly is a float? Well, think of a float as any decimal number, 1.1 negative 2.6, 105.4. It's any number that has a decimal point in it. Later on, we're gonna take a look at integers, which are just whole numbers. So one, 10, negative five, uh, 1,006. But for now, we're just gonna look at float. So I'm actually gonna come down in here. And yes, I could have just did the 3F down here to say every three seconds. But it's generally a good idea when you have a variable that you might want to be changing. Let's go ahead and just use that variable here. So I'm going to use repeat time. I'm going to go ahead and save this off. We're going to go back into Unity. I'm going to take my spawn point. Just click it once. And I'm going to put that script on it. There we go. I'm going to get rid of that evil QB that we actually have in our scene. So we actually have none now. So I'm going to click the spawn point, go back into my prefabs. I'm going to take that evil QB, put it right up here into our component that we created. Let the reset time be three. Uh, everything should be good. I don't see any errors. So I'm going to go ahead and save my scene. I'll save a scene before you hit play because you never know when it might crash. I'm going to hit start and it should start spawning for us. There we go. So it's spawning, but we are getting an error. So let's go ahead. We'll stop it. And we can see here that we're spawning one every three seconds. It's just going to keep going. But we have an error. It's not moving anymore. Why is that? And we could scroll up to one. Actually, it's all the same error over and over again. So it says the variable target of evil QB has not been assigned. Ooh. So if we double click it. Oh, it's not going in. But the problem 
is if we go into our evil QB script, it's saying that this target has not been assigned. So let's look at our prefab. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink some of these down just so there's a little less visual clutter. And what we're looking at here is the target. Now remember before we just went ahead and dragged and dropped it in? Well, we can't do that now when we're working with a prefab, but we went ahead and set up tags earlier and this is how we're actually going to be able to spawn our evil QB in and then tell it exactly what to go find and attack. So I'm going to go back into Mono Develop. I'm going to have to make sure that I have my evil QB script open. And then during the awake method, I'm going to go ahead and find that, the, the player by its player tag and assign target there. Now the awake method is the very first method Unity allows you to do anything in as far as when the game's running. There is a reset method, but that only works inside of the editor. So for those that are familiar with a little bit of programming, especially object-oriented programming, this is essentially your constructor. It's the first method that fires that you can do anything in. So I'm going to go ahead and say target is equal to, now we're going to go out and find it. So I'm going to say game object, but take note, we have two of them here. We have one with a capital G and one with a small g. The ones with the small letter at the beginning, like game object and transform, those represent the ones that we're attached to. So this small g game object will be the game object this component is going to be attached to, where the large game object references that overall class, or that game object that we're looking at in the hierarchy. So we want to use the big G because we're not looking at ourselves. We're going out to look for something else. So we'll say dot. And of course, once you start typing in find, uh, we have a few finds that we can do here. We can go find something by its actual, the name, so the FPS controller. I think it's called that. I can't remember, but it doesn't matter because I set up a tag. That's what I want to use. Now, if we had multiple players, we could look for them this way. It's going to return an array of game objects. Still not quite what I want. And this is the one I want. So I have to make sure in order to use this one, I only ever have one game object tagged as player, but that's fine. It's my player. It's all I'm ever going to have. So I'm going to use this one. Then I just simply have to tell it what tag. And that tag was player. Now this is going to return a game object. If we looked at it when we were typing it in, but our target is not a game object. We're actually looking for the transform on that target. So I can just say dot transform at the end and it'll go out. It'll find this game object for me. And the game object that's going to look for is the one with the tag player. And then it's going to grab its transform and save it to our target name. And of course, down here, when we're grabbing the target, it's actually grabbing our player's position now. Hopefully that's not too much for you. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions. If I don't get back to you, I'm sure someone else will. So we got no errors. Let's go ahead, we'll hit play. And now when the game starts up, we'll go ahead and let that first one spawn in. And there we go. He spins around and goes for me. And they keep dropping in every three seconds. And of course, if I were to go run over there, we can see them all chasing me. <laughs> well, there we go. We took a look at setting up a prefab. We've went ahead and actually used those tags we created. We've created our second script. And now we have spawn points. We could simply take the spawn point, duplicate it, drag it over somewhere else in the world, go ahead, start it up. And now it's going to be spawning two of them every three seconds. Now we could actually go in. We'll go back into the script. Since the component is just attached to the game object itself, we could actually go in and say, I want this one to spawn every five seconds, and I want it to spawn maybe some other prefab we've set up. But that's enough for this lesson here. Hopefully you guys found it useful. Let me know down below in the comments, and let's move on to the next lesson.